the one of the things I was curious about is uh, like you, you you sort of tossed it off very casually earlier. Most people don't really claim to know who Satoshi Nakamoto is. I've seen mm. everything claimed from um, Elon Musk to it was the CIA creating yep. Bitcoin in order to create the the protocol or the create the the market for a digital currency that then they could make like Fed coin. Um, so <laughs> I've seen. Sure. everything suggested about who he is so you said you know him do you <laughs> believe that he is satoshi nakamoto so and who i is it? I, won't tell I, <laughs> I have a, a personal relationship with dr craig wright um we are sort of colleagues um he is the chief scientist at a company called nchain nchain is the company that created the original bsv node client and they maintain the node client uh, at the at the will of the Bitcoin Association of Zug Switzerland, so um, Craig was doxxed in 2015 as Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, Wired and Gizmodo magazines published stories on the same day, and it was the same day that the Australian tax authority was raiding his home, and somebody, some person who we do not know also brought in local Australian media to stand in front of his house and film it being raided by the Australian tax authority. We do not know to this day who the leaker is who gave the information to the ATO, the local Australian media, Wired Magazine and Gizmodo Magazine and had them orchestrate this giant thing all in one day. Now, the curious thing is that Craig Wright did not live in that house any longer. He had moved to London a number of months earlier because he says that he he knew that something was happening at some point and he needed to get his family to safety. Uh, so he, as Satoshi Nakamoto, knew that he had been hacked and, and had a, a mitigation plan in place that he executed at that point. Um, when he was asked about it, he denied it, handled it. No, I'm not Satoshi Nakamoto for, for quite some time. Um, Ultimately, the, the attacks started immediately. Um, he gathered some people together, uh, significant people in the space at the time. It was the president of the Bitcoin Foundation. Um, uh, it was the lead developer of Bitcoin Core. Uh, and he invited a number of other people uh, to see signings. He was like, hey, look, I want to prove to you very quietly that I'm Satoshi Nakamoto uh, because I'm, I'm in hiding. I'm in danger, frankly. Um, let's, let's get some of the stuff out of the way. I really need some allies here. Uh, because I was trying to be private. Somebody doxed me and has this whole thing, and I'm, I'm afraid for my life. So he showed Gavin Andreessen, who, who was that, uh, that head of, of Bitcoin Core at the time, and John Matonis, who was the founder of Hushmail and, and a bunch of other stuff, but he was the president of the Bitcoin Foundation. And he, he showed them definitively, hey, I'm, I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, when Gavin Andreessen came out the next day and said, hey, I met Satoshi Nakamoto, he showed it to me, on, on this laptop, he did a key signing and did all this stuff. Bam, keys revoked. Bitcoin Core said, you're out of Bitcoin Core. We assume you've been compromised and therefore you're not allowed to commit to the Bitcoin Core repo any longer. Well, that's curious, isn't it? Like Gavin, who had been de developing, he was one of the very first Bitcoin developers he developed with Satoshi. He had a personal private relationship with Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto left Gavin Andreessen the keys to the project and said, Gavin is in charge of Bitcoin. And the moment Gavin said, I believe Craig Wright is Satoshi Nakamoto. He was kicked out, period. And so uh, heads rolled. Uh, everybody that saw Craig Wright um, and said Craig Wright Satoshi Nakamoto was basically kicked out of the, the Bitcoin community immediately. So Craig took a, a very big step back and said, okay, it, you know, I, knowing me or knowing my truth or whatever is now a liability to people's livelihood, careers, safety, who knows what else. Um, Stuff got very, very, very contentious very quick. Um, but yeah, I, I believe firmly that Craig Wright was the creator of the Satoshi Nakamoto moniker, that he was the author of the white paper and was generally the architect of, of the Bitcoin system, protocol, rules, etc. cetera. Uh, Craig has been very clear that he had people that helped him with software dev and, and other stuff, that he hired people and, and that, that he had help, but that Bitcoin was his idea. It's like the the you know the architect of a building and you know there's also stone cutters there's glass guys there's wood guys you know and they'd be like, hey i built this cathedral too and it's like yeah <laughs> kind of but the architect it's his building right so that's 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 how i understand craig wright uh to be satoshi nakamoto 
So th- it seems like if, if there's been quite a few people who were very close to him and they believe that, that when he said he's Satoshi Nakamoto and they, he's proven it to them and these people are all very big in that space and have been there since seemingly almost the very beginning or at least mm-hmm. very early on in, in the story of Bitcoin. And yet the it's it's so disputed it seems weird to me because like i this like i i only even realized and you know people probably laugh at me for this i only realized that there was even someone who was like quite legitimately claiming to be satoshi nakamoto from your twitter feed about two months ago (laughs) (laughs) because like all the stuff that i'd seen about it was essentially just um who is Satoshi Nakamoto articles in the mainstream press. And obviously they're not the people to get cryptocurrency news from, but you know, I thought they would have at least done some due diligence on, you know, this pretty big story. Um, (laughs) For sure. Craig, Craig Wright is the name that no one's allowed to say. People, people are going to reach out to you and tell you 100% that I'm a lying scammer, that Craig is a lying scammer and the whole thing, right? This is going to happen. (laughs) And if you do not agree with, you do not bow and kiss the ring of, of BTC and, and, the small black narrative, they're going to kick you out of the club. I, I guarantee you this. I'm not in the club, uh, don't worry. And <laughs> but this but this is what happened to Craig too. Like people were a little okay with Craig. You know, I mean people were obviously curious, but like, okay, maybe he's Satoshi. Let's check this out. But as soon as he came out and said B, like BTC, the small block notion, lightning network, all this stuff is bullshit. Uh, Bitcoin was always intended to be no block size limit, no protocol limits, no any of this. It's supposed to be the the data ledger for for global commerce. Period. All commerce should be on Bitcoin. It was like, oh no, that that flies in the face of 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 everything that we have built our reputations on. And ultimately, um, I, I I break it down to um, there's a lot of venture capital money that was given to. Uh, a lot of development groups between 2014 and 2015. Uh, Blockstream was given about $40 million uh, by MasterCard Ventures in 2014 to establish a professional Bitcoin development group. And I would argue that MasterCard has a major conflict of interest in being one of the primary funders of Bitcoin development, right? Mm. So it, Craig, Craig flies in the face of their portfolio, period. I, I think that is the biggest aspect of it is that, hey, BTC is not supposed to look like this. This is not what what I created as Satoshi Nakamoto. And so what he tells them is that ultimately the the protocol, when you make a protocol change at all, so there's a soft fork, hard fork, whatever, if you change the protocol, the MIT license is very clear that you need to express that change with a name change. So BTC making a fundamental protocol change means that it's not Bitcoin even if it synchronizes, if it's the longest chain and and the most proof of work and all of that, because the governance is what matters. And so it's it's a ticker war. It's like a social war about understanding what is the real Bitcoin. And that is a conversation that is too philosophical for most people. (laughs) And and there's a ton of money tangled up in it. Mm. Like here's, here's the thing. BSV has heavily underperformed the markets and therefore people will say, well, yeah, because it, like that indicates that it is a scam. And I would argue, well, no, the, the powers that be, the, the, the wealth structures of the world. So if you look at like Silicon Valley venture capital, if you look at the central banks of the world, you look at the, the, the world bank, uh, do you know who's, who's one of the biggest advisors to companies like Lightning Labs and Blockstream and Coinbase and, and Kraken and BitGo and Grayscale and Coindesk, the media company, uh, Abra Wallet, uh, Fireblocks, who else? We got a bunch more. We got Genesis Trading and probably 50 more brands. The, the lead advisor is a guy named Larry Summers. Larry Summers is a former World Bank president. So if we're talking about disrupting global finance, we have handed the advisorship of all of these key brands and infrastructure partners and developers, all these different things in the space. And we've given it to the the, the former World Bank president. This was a, a guy, he was a, a policy advisor to the Clintons on, 
uh, in, in the Clinton White House. He's a former Harvard, I believe is the president of Harvard University and things. But then look at the other people in, in that organization. The other people in that organization include uh, people from Bain Capital, which was Mitt Romney's venture capital oh, I'm firm. Very familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> There's Barry Silbert, who was a, uh, a a big, serious Wall Street guy, and and these guys are paying the salaries of all of the people who are influencing the direction of BTC. So I mean, just the fact that they own CoinDesk. CoinDesk is looked at as the definitive authority in reporting on the entire blockchain economy but they are owned by a portfolio company of MasterCard Ventures. And so you are getting fed information about what is the best blockchain? Why does it have value? How do we determine what is good? And you think that you're not being propagandized, but, but every bit of information is coming from people who are paid by MasterCard to tell you what Bitcoin is. And it's a massive conflict of interest and nobody's gonna tell you except this guy and this is why people uh li like to say they like to say i'm a conspiracy theorist and all this stuff but <laughs> go ahead and look you can look it up mastercard ventures created digital currency group and digital currency group has the portfolio of essentially every brand that matters in the entire blockchain economy and so this decentralization thing is decentralization theater and we're all being paid off to go along with it by becoming fiat rich you know if, if, if i just made 10x gains in the last year i'm gonna be like you know what maybe it's good anyways I'm like let's move on i'm appreciating these gains here right wow i mean the, the comment section is really loving this actually they're agreeing with you um, there was a lot of there was a lot of fighting but they seem to have like focused around the consensus that dcg are evil basically um, yeah. and whenever i see anyone labeled with the with conspiracy theorists these days i'm like what have they got to say that's important that, that's just my immediate reaction. Right. I've seen too many people saying important things called conspiracy theorists to dismiss yep. anyone now. Like, the, yeah, yeah I, it's it's because I don't know. I get the feel the feeling that the the mainstream press and and I don't know the establishment as such, the globalists, whatever you want to call them, sure, the rich people who who are in <laughs> the positions of power, basically. Um, yeah, I love that people pretend that they don't exist because it's like, are you stupid? Of course they exist. Right. Like, yes. Rich you know. people have each other's phone numbers and they do whatever they can to stay rich. <laughs> yeah. like, that's, that's not a crazy suggestion. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and leave a comment for us in the comments below. Let me know what you thought and if you'd like to see more of this from the show. Thank you and we'll see you again next time.